Shakespeare's Sonnets Sonnets 11 to 20 11 As fast as thou shalt wane, so fast thou growest in one of thine, from that which thou departest. And that fresh blood which youngly thou bestowest, thou mayst call thine when thou from youth convertest. Herein lies wisdom, beauty, and increase. Without this, folly, age, and cold decay. If all were minded so, the times should cease, and threescore year would make the world away. Let those whom nature hath not made for store, harsh, featureless, and rude, barrenly perish. Look whom she best endowed, she gave thee more, which bounteous gift thou shouldst in bounty cherish. She carved thee for her seal, and meant thereby thou shouldst print more, not let that copy die. 12. When I do count the clock that tells the time, and see the brave day sunk in hideous night, when I behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silvered o'er with white, when lofty trees I see barren of leaves, Which erst from heat did canopy the herd, And summer's green all girded up in sheaves, Born on the bier with white and bristly beard, Then of thy beauty do I question make, That thou among the wastes of time must go, Since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake, And die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defence, Save breed to brave him when he takes thee hence. 13. O oh, that you were yourself, but love, You are no longer yours than you yourself here live. Against this coming end you should prepare, And your sweet semblance to some other give. So should that beauty which you hold in lease find no determination. Then you were yourself again after yourself's decease, when your sweet issue your sweet form should bear. Who lets so fair a house fall to decay, which husbandry in honour might uphold against the stormy gusts of winter's day and barren rage of death's eternal cold? O oh, none but unthrifts! Dear my love, you know, you had a father, let your son say so. 14. Not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, And yet methinks I have astronomy, But not to tell of good or evil luck, Of plagues or dearths or seasons quality. Nor can I fortune to brief minutes tell, Pointing to each his thunder, rain, and wind, Or say with princes if it shall go well, By oft predict that I in heaven find. But from thine eyes my knowledge I derive, And constant stars, in them I read such art As truth and beauty shall together strive, If from thyself to store thou wouldst convert. Or else of thee this I prognosticate, Thy end is truth's and beauty's doom and date. 15. When I consider everything that grows Holds in perfection but a little moment, that this huge stage presenteth naught but shows whereon the stars in secret influence comment. When I perceive that men as plants increase, cheered and checked even by the self-same sky, vaunt in their youthful sap at height decrease, and wear their brave state out of memory, then the conceit of this inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight where wasteful time debateth with decay to change your day of youth to sullied night, and all in war with time for love of you, as he takes from you, I engraft you new. 16. But wherefore do you not a mightier way make war upon this bloody tyrant time? And fortify yourself in your decay with means more blessed than my barren rhyme? Now stand you on the top of happy hours, And many maiden gardens yet unset, With virtuous wish would bear you living flowers, Much liker than your painted counterfeit. So should the lines of life that life repair, Which this, time's pencil or my pupil pen, Neither in inward worth nor outward fare, 
can make you live yourself in eyes of men. To give away yourself keeps yourself still, and you must live, drawn by your own sweet skill. 17. Who will believe my verse in time to come, if it were filled with your most high deserts? Though yet heaven knows it is but as a tomb which hides your life, and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes, and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say, This poet lies, such heavenly touches ne'er touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with their age, be scorned, like old men, of less truth than tongue, and your true rights be termed a poet's rage, and stretched metre of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice, in it and in my rhyme. 18. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. 19. Devouring time, blunt thou the lion's paws, and make the earth devour her own sweet brood. Pluck the keen teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws, and burn the long-lived phoenix in her blood. Make glad and sorry seasons as thou fleetst, and do whate'er thou wilt, swift-footed time, to the wide world and all her fading sweets. But I forbid thee one most heinous crime. O carve not with thy hours on my love's fair brow, nor draw no lines there with thine antique pen. Him in thy course untainted do allow for beauty's pattern to succeeding men. Yet do thy worst, old time, despite thy wrong. My love shall in my verse ever live young. 20. A woman's face, with nature's own hand painted, hast thou, the master mistress of my passion. A woman's gentle heart, but not acquainted with shifting change, as is false woman's fashion. An eye more bright than theirs, less false in rolling, gilding the object whereupon it gazeth, a man in hue all hues in his controlling, which steals men's eyes, and women's souls amazeth. And for a woman wert thou first created, till nature, as she wrought thee, fell a doting, and by addition me of thee defeated, by adding one thing to my purpose nothing. But since she pricked thee out for women's pleasure, mine be thy love, and thy love's use their treasure." End of sonnets 11 to 20 of Shakespeare's sonnets.